In the other video, I mentioned about melting into the nature. When you melt into the nature and let the nature take over, we end up in finding the empty mind. I use the word empty mind or no mind because the mind activity changes when you are melt into the nature. It's kind of like a zone experience. You see what's going on, you feel what's going on, you hear and smell and relate to what's going on. So there's no boundary between you and nature, between you and external world or external world into the internal world. An internal world is, let's call it, within the mind. And what's in, within the mind? The mind may be busy doing this, doing that, planning for the future, for the tax, for the setting up the date, or what to cook and eat. And we have those mind activity which is helpful, but if we have too much of it, all, all over the place, running around, like we call it monkey mind, we are so detached from the nature, the source of our being, where we came from. So to navigate our life, my view is that we need to have a good balance. In Buddhism, I think they use the word middle way or you can call it the connection between brain and heart. I mentioned this in other videos. And the Dalai Lama commented to support such a view that I mentioned that we use our brain, but at the same time listen to our heart and find the mission to live by. So in that case, the heart is like a core of our being, the foundation. But when you look at what the foundation is, there's nothing in there. Out of nothing we are born and growing or evolving to be human and use your brain. But the point here, I may sound probably a little philosophical, but the we don't want to lose the core of our being, the comfortable, free, liberated. And if you can find that, you may find yourself not thinking. Mind is empty. So you can perceive things and figure things out real time from moment to moment. And that's what the bird is doing, the let us doing, <laughs> monkey is doing. They live from moment to moment. So their mind activity is very limited. So it sounds like a stupid thing to go backward to be a monkey or chimpanzee or let us since we are a human being. But my view, or even I may you know, say this is my conviction, is that we are too occupied in our mind, we lose the base. And the opposite way of saying that is that if we have a firm base, which is nothing, an emptiness, I call it, and if you are comfortable with that feeling, or well, actually that's where you feel most comfortable as you are. But if you find that space, I want to call it like the origin of our being. From there, you can navigate this way, that way, upward, sideways. You can plan for the dinner or date or to configure some interesting invention or painting or 
fun in the trip, whatever the case may be. Because we have so, such a faculty, the talent, the potential to use your mind to our benefit. But if we are too occupied, we may lose the balance. And that's not healthy because if our mind is busy, we, we may not listen to our heart or our physical situation that the stomach is hurting, but you just keep on moving to whatever you are occupied with. If you are narrow-minded and occupied and not being able to see the total picture, you may end up in sub-optimizing. You may achieve something, but you lose the balance. And when you lose the balance, the total existence of who we are may be a little bit crippled. So I think it's the nature's way that we want to confirm our basis or the foundation and go different direction and then always come back there. It's like a home. The home you feel most comfortable, relaxed, peaceful, as it is, the nature's way. So that's the basic message and the other benefit of it is not to lose the balance and how all the opportunities open, but you have a wisdom to navigate. It's like a hearing the bird and the lion, <laughs> or, you know, there are a bunch of things going around external world, but we have to find the passage, which way to go, assess the situation and figure things out in a holistic way, but not too much too occupied in one small space. Because you may be good at aiming on something in a small area, but if you are too occupied and forget about the rest, the foundation may be crumbled. And if that happens, you may have the strain or some suffering, unbalanced situation, such situation may not be very healthy for your our being. So living as a human, as an individual, we have lots of potentials and many areas to explore. But my point, the benefit of no mind or empty mind or being with nature at our foundation from our heart is to see things as they are, to bring out the insight of being at the core, our foundation, and relate to what's going on there. And that state will produce the wisdom, so to speak. That's the benefit, the wisdom of what can be done. So if you find the passage into some direction, you move on. And every now and then you come back when there's no mind or natural state and kind of synthesize the whole to make sense out of it. Kind of like going to the PDC, a plan to check it out. By checking what's going on, figuring out what's to be done, and you plan for it, and you move on, and you reflect on what has happened, and come back to the basic point of who you are, where you are. So, I may be saying, by using funny word to talk about the basic and obvious thing. But the foundation of all of it is not to lose the foundation. And we need to have a space 
for a moment, maybe to meditate, maybe to do the gardening, whatever the case may be, the space that you feel most comfortable as you are. Then the creative thought will pop up. Keep shifting direction, adjusting, and be happy as you can be, as you are, and express what you think, and find a way into the future. I think that's the benefit of having a raw mind. It may sound very paradoxical, you want to go somewhere, but to go somewhere, you have to go back to the basis of the empty space. But we want to go through this process back and forth, and not losing the foundation as we move on. Thank you.